Craig, when you think of all the microbes in the world, uh, are they all dangerous? Well, thank goodness they aren't. In fact, when we look at the millions of microbes that uh, we at least have an idea that are on the planet, there are just only a handful that infect humans. But this handful is pretty effective at what they do. Well, how do uh, certain microorganisms become pathogenic? What's, what's the deal? I mean, why not all? Why just a few? Well, uh, a microorganism has to be able to live in the growth parameters, essentially, of the human body. So we have a certain body temperature, 37 degrees centigrade, and we have a certain pH, we have a certain set of nutrients that they can use as energy sources, and so they have to be able to fit in these parameters. And there are certainly plenty of organisms that fit in these parameters. In fact, if uh, you took the human body and all the cells that are in it and on it, for every single cell that's you, there's 10 cells that are microorganisms. So, so we, uh, you know, we're kind of a in, little mini inhabitable planet walking around. Uh, we're Horton, here's a who, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so how do these uh, dangerous microbes become pathogenic? What's, what are the mechanisms that cause that? Well, you think about being a pathogen, there's really four things. First, you have to gain access to the body, which many can do. Second, you have to be able to grow in that environment, which many can do. Third, you have to be able to resist the body defenses, which many can do. But the fourth thing is really critical. You have to produce some kind of compound or some kind of structure that causes damage to the body. For example, a toxin like the exotoxin that we associate with botulism, this neurotoxin that uh, creates uh, so much havoc. And so you really, on top of being able to live in that environment, you've got to cause damage uh, to the host. And that's what pathogens are. They cause damage to us, and if we can't repair it, then they win. So uh, when you think about these microbes, are we talking bacteria particularly? I mean, it, 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 what types of microorganisms are we talking about? Well, when you look across the board at uh, all the different types of microorganisms, certainly bacteria are, are pretty common. Bacteria, the cause of pneumonia and many of the STDs and so forth, but also viruses. Uh, viruses cause a lot of the diseases that we're familiar with, like the common cold and influenza. They have a little bit different nature to them. They have to replicate inside the host cell, so naturally viruses are going to damage the host. But even fungi, we have fungal infections. Uh, we even have some uh, algae that produce toxins that are harmful. So really, there's a full palette of microorganisms, but uh, we generally focus on the viruses and the bacteria. One thing that's fascinating me about this, as I get into it a little bit, uh, is how these uh, critters manage to spread their evil. What, what, <laughs> what happens there? What, what's going on? What are the mechanisms there? Well, I think it's a little bit like, uh, like humanity looking for new resources. Eventually, they either wear out their welcome and our body defenses uh, uh, kick them out, so they have to find a new place. But they're always looking for additional resources. And so when you think about, for example, the symptoms that we experience with the disease, it's really uh, them utilizing our body functions to disseminate them to other hosts where they can uh, get the nutrients and have the habitat and environment that they want to want to live in. And so, uh, yeah, they're just looking for a greener pasture all the time, and unfortunately, uh, we accommodate them. So you're telling me that sometimes the symptoms they cause are by design? Oh, exactly, like, exactly. Like, like a cough? Well, like a cough, the certain organism, like the cold virus, irritates the lining of the respiratory tract. This irritation causes us to cough, one of our defense mechanisms to expel things, and, and it works great for it. It travels on aerosols to other people. Uh, cholera is another good example. This bacteria gets in our digestive tracts and, uh, and causes uh, diarrhea. Well, diarrhea is a good way to get around, particularly in unsanitary environments, which is why cholera can be so devastating in developing countries.